Welcome back to Heritage. In addition to the stories of Michigan history found in small museums across the state, Heritage would also like to tell the story of the work required to build and maintain those collections. Work that goes on behind the scenes. Rana Rivers of Rivers Fine Art Conservation shows us some examples of the processes used to conserve the Clarkson broadside seen on a previous episode. Let's look deeper into the art and science of paper conservation. My training was a master's program in conservation of art. And in order to get into that program, we had to have the equivalent of a bachelor's in chemistry, in art history, and in, and in studio art. So it took me about 10 years to get in. Also, we, we had to have the recommendation of conservators who we had worked for. So um, I traveled all over the country uh, working in various labs. Then I was accepted to the University of Delaware Winter Tour Museum joint program. It's a master's of science in art conservation. And that's a three-year program. And the third year you spend uh, in a, a practical uh, situation. Uh, my third year was spent at the Detroit Institute of Arts. That's, that's how I came here. I've been in private practice since the year 2000. This little print of Lincoln's home uh, would be, we would clean the same way that we cleaned the broadside front and back. First we would check it. It has some writing on the back and so we would check the ink and the any markings back here that we think are historically important to save those. They check out all right. They can be cleaned and, and washed. We would check the um, printer's ink. It's just one ink on the front. We grate our own eraser. You can buy graded eraser to clean uh, like architectural drawings, but that has uh, sulfur and other impurities in it that become indoor pollutants and age the paper. So we use these Statler erasers and we grate them and then to clean we just roll them around underneath another eraser and they start out white and you can see that they're getting darker and you can see here's one that hasn't rolled around it's fairly white these are quite gray and they'll just get grayer and grayer we do this several times over until they don't get gray any longer. And in a really large thing like the, the broadside, we do it in sort of a grid. You know, this, this is the largest area that I would want to clean at one time. And so we do a little grid so we're sure that we get everything. We do it front and back. We just keep doing it until we get the desired effect and, and the eraser crumbs stop turning color. After the manual cleaning of the broadside, we also did aqueous cleaning. I'm going to demonstrate that on this small print as well. We, ma we make our own reverse osmosis water for the lab and we add ammonium hydroxide to it to get the pH to seven. And then we immersed the broadside just as we immersed this small print. We also warm the water because that uh, helps it to do a better job of breaking down what's in the paper that makes it brown. And th those are um, acid degradation products. 
So we just gently rock it and leave it in for several minutes. Now, I don't expect much to come out of this one immediately, but sometimes um, it starts to come out. It comes out in little billows of, of brown water. And eventually, after it's washed for half an hour or so, the wash water will look like tea. And that's how we get it back to a creamier color, more original color for this print. There were several tears in the uh, Clarkston broadside. Mostly, there were some edge tears like on this print. Mostly on the broadside, they were uh, the creases had turned into tears. So here's how we mended them. We used Japanese tissue and wheat starch paste. And we put men's on the back. And we pasted out the Japanese tissue with the wheat starch paste. Let it dry just a bit. And then put it on the back of the tear. I didn't let it dry enough. This was much too wet. And if they're too wet, they can cause staining. So I put 100% cotton blotter and pellon underneath it, and then on top of it, the pellon, the cotton blotter. and put a weight on it until it's dry, and then the mend can't be seen from the front. After the broadside was washed and mended, it was wrinkled. And so at that point, things go into a drying stack like this. It's under sheets of plexi with lead weights on top, each one two pounds. It has 100% wool felt in there, like is used for printmaking, and the 100% cotton blotter, and the uh, sheets of pellon, just like we did for the tear mends. And for the broadside, we had to use our entire eight foot by four foot table and buy special blotter and roll it out and, um, make our drying stack and then place all the plexi that we had on top of it. And it came out um, nice and flat. And then it couldn't be rolled or folded after that point. So we made a, uh, a large foam core folder for it to keep it safe to get back to Clarkston.